little short homily I have for you today. Uh, Luke chapter 18, we're going to look at one verse. Luke chapter 18, we're going to look at one verse. Um, and pull that verse, extract that verse from this story and see what the Lord has um, for us uh, this morning. Luke chapter 18, verse 39, King James Version. King James Version says, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I will not be quiet. Amen. I will not be quiet. We have been talking about and we continue uh, talking about the effects of doubt. What happens to us when we start walking in doubt. We understand, Calvary, that doubt does not promote, it prevents. It does not develop, it destroys. It does not help, it hurts. It does not bring us together, it pulls us apart. It does not cause us to be who God is calling us to be. It ensures that we fall short in being who God is calling us to be. With everything that the Lord has allowed our church to go through during this trying and tumultuous and tragic time in her history, we look with great expectations because we know we will come out triumphant I wish somebody would have heard that we look with great expectations not necessarily focusing all our attention on what we're going through there are few of us that are looking forward to where we're going to and 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 we're we're, we're looking triumphantly through uh, to our victory in the midst of a season where it appears we have lost. So, 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 this season that we're in, because I truly believe that in life everything is a season. But if, if, if it wasn't so, the Bible wouldn't say so. That to, to all things there is a season. And, and, and what, what, I, what I, I found out last night, uh, uh, Reverend Daniels, that uh, 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 the, 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 the seasons have recently changed. Um, 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 I believe it was last week or the week before the end of last week where uh, the clock officially moved from summer to fall. And, 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 and when it moved from summer to fall to Swafford, it was on a 99 degree day. And, I, and, and, and Sister Walker, I found myself saying, this ain't much fall right now because it's 99 degrees. It still feel like we still in the same season. Uh, and I've been wondering, I've been wondering, when will we see the effects of a change season? And I was, I was getting ready for bed last night, and I just happened to have the TV on the news, because, Cat, I don't normally listen or watch the news. I'm a, I'm a sports man, and I didn't start watching the blacklist. That's pretty much all I watch. But, but on last night, the news was on, and the weatherman was giving his report. And he said, it's going to be hot 
on Monday, Tuesday, but there's a storm coming in Wednesday. <laughs> you ain't got it yet. He said, he said, and after the storm leaves, the sun is going to shine, but the temperature is going to just be 86 degrees. And, and the Lord spoke to me, and he told me that if Calvary can just weather the storm, if Calvary can just don't give up during the storm, if, if we just don't fight during the storm, if, if we just lock arms and work together during the storm, the sun will shine. Again, so. so I have... Sister. Sister Holloway, I have prayed earnestly and in all sincerely. I prayed patiently and I prayed and I've asked God to please give his people what they need to endure hardness as a good soldier. To understand that this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's working for us. I know it don't. I know it don't. I know it don't seem like it. I know it don't feel like it. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know it doesn't seem like it's working for you, but keep on watching while it's working. And, and while it's working, you keep on worshiping and not wondering and give God the praise and tell God thank you while he's doing something that you can't see. And know that he will make everything all right we have we've talked about in length concerning the power of the tongue and how important it is for us to be cognizant and careful concerning that which we allow to come out of our mouths i am a believer that what you put out is what you get back I'm a believer that what you expect is what you will receive. I am a believer that what you look for is what you're going to find. I am a believer that God is not mocked. That whatever a man or a woman sows is what he or she shall reap. Calvary, that is why the enemy always tries to surround you with negativity. Because he knows that if he can put enough negativity around you, he will inevitably put negativity in you. That, that, that's why you have to be cognizant of what you allow around you. You have to be cognizant of what and who gets into your space. You got to be cognizant of who is in your air. The wrong folk and the wrong stuff in your space will put you in the wrong place. I'm going to say this again. The wrong folk and the wrong stuff in your space will put you in the wrong place. So with everything that we've been through, with all of the ups and downs we've faced, there are those of us who've made up in our minds that we're going to continue to believe. We will continue, even in the midst of these struggles, 
even in the midst of these trying times, we will continue to believe. We will continue to walk with great expectations, with unbridled excitement, realizing that we are closer than we've ever been. Of making it through this season that we're in to the next season that God has prepared for us. Be not weary in well doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. Now, I want you to understand, I want you to understand, I want you to understand that trouble does not develop your character. Trouble reveals your character. Trouble doesn't make you who you are. Trouble shows who you are. Somebody got missed that. Trouble does not make you who you are. Trouble shows who you are because the real you shows up in trouble. You are who you are before you get in trouble. It just shows up when trouble shows up. Who you are is not made through trouble. Who you are is a shown through trouble. Don't get excited about people who are with you when there is no trouble. Because you are probably going to find out when trouble comes that those folks never have really been with you. You got a lot of folks that will show up for the party. But they ain't there doing the pain. You got some folk that's wondering why they wasn't on your on your on your invitee list. You need you can tell them, baby, I didn't invite you because when I was going through hell, you was nowhere around. I, I didn't invite you because when everybody else was talking about me, they was talking to you about me, and you was listening to what they had to say. I didn't invite you to my party because when I was down and out, I asked you and you left me. And now that the balloons have been blown, now that the candles have been lit, now that the cake has been cooked, to come in here acting like you better part of my team. Tell you that I need somebody that's gonna go with me through the storm and the rain. They were probably never with you in the first place. We are not into this holy sanctum with an attitude of appreciation and a practice of praise on our, in our hearts because we are aware that God has been good to us. When you are in relationship with the Lord, you understand, watch this Calvary, that getting from God does not make God good. Being with God is what makes God good. Good. Walking with the Lord, even when we're walking through the storms, makes God good. Sailing with the Lord, even when the waves are crashing in the boat, makes God good. Things don't have to be good for the believer to declare that God is good. Shucks. Things don't have to be good for a true believer to declare that God is good. You ain't got to have all the answers for a true believer to lift up his hands, lift up her hands, lift up their voices and say God is good. Things don't have to be the way that I want them to be.
for me to declare that God is good. God is not good because things are good. Things are good because God is good. God is not good because things are good. Things are good because God is good. So we celebrate. I personally have celebrated and I pray that there are members of our church who have celebrated, who have celebrated the lessons learned during this difficult season in the history of our church. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God that things are not from showers as bad as they could be. We thank God that he has placed kindness in the hearts of members of our of this Christian family who have opened their doors and provided us a place of worship. We thank God that we haven't missed a Wednesday nor a Sunday of having somewhere to come in and talk about the goodness of Jesus. We thank God and we ought to give God a standing ovation and we ought to lift our hands and we ought to lift our voices and, and we ought to tell God thank you for putting the right people in the right place at the right time. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We've learned. We've learned that God is faithful to us even when we're not faithful to him. Upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. Gates of hell won't prevail against me. We are yet still alive, yet still serving God, yet still experiencing his grace and his mercy, yet still receiving his blessings yet still able to say that God is real and if you let him, he will take care of you. We continue this walk with eyes wide open to the realization of what can be even while facing and dealing with the reality of what is. Sometimes the reality of how things are extinguishes our excitement for how things can be. Today, it is my mission to give us a reason to be excited about how things can be, even in the midst of how things are. Our biblical character today will help, get, help us get excited about what can be. This familiar pericope is found in Luke's gospel and it is the last Luke narrative of healing within his gospel. Luke's account of the healing of the blind man epitomizes the significance of the healing work of Jesus on behalf of the poor. Following the passion prediction of chapter 18, verses 31 through 34, Jesus is now on the move towards Jerusalem. Theologians identify Luke chapter 9, verse 51 through Luke chapter 19, verse 48 as the journey motif. For in them, the reader finds that Jesus is constantly moving and doing 
his father's will. Today, the stage is set with the reference of three characters. There are three characters in this text. Okay? There are three characters in this text. The crowd, the blind man, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the crowd, the blind man, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the crowd, the person with an issue, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the crowd, the person who needs something, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the crowd, the person who had a prayer, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the crowd, the person who had a want, and Jesus. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the church, the person that needed something, and Jesus. Which one are you? crowd, the blind man, and Jesus. It is not by accident that Luke points out that not only is the man blind, he is also a beggar. Now the fact that he is a beggar places him within the 5 to 10 percent of the population that society has identified as expendable. They don't mean nothing. They have no value. They cannot contribute anything to us. All they can do is take from us. Every time I look at my check, somebody's got paid from my money before I even get my money. I still don't know who FICA is. I ain't met him. I've been calling, looking for him. He won't return my I'll let you know. They are expendable church those persons for whom society has no need, the person for whom the world has turned its back on, those persons who unfortunately even the church has identified as not worth it. You know those people. The one you see at the red light asking for arms and make you make sure you lock your doors, raise your windows, put your hands at 10 and 2 and look straight ahead as if ignoring them you are erasing them. But isn't it good to know that the same people that others have deemed expendable, Jesus deems irreplaceable? Isn't it good that those whom others don't see, the Lord does see? There's somebody listening to me right now. People said you were expendable. Somebody said you were not worth it. Somebody told you that you didn't deserve to be loved and all you would be able to do was live off the charity of others. But the Lord sent you to hear my voice today that you know he sees you and your prayers are about to be answered. Oh, I wish somebody would just give God some praise right there and holler, he sees me. With everybody who looked past me, the Lord looked at me. And I'm here today because the Lord sees me. I, did, I didn't come up on the right side of the track. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth. Sometimes we didn't know where the next meal was coming from. But what mama did know how to do, she knew how to pray. She knew how to talk to the Lord. She knew how to call on the master. And when you laughed at me, he loved on me looked over me he looked at me I wish somebody that know God sees you would just give the master some praise in this building Bible says Bible says 
The Bible says that mm, verse 37, he hears that Jesus was passing by. We already found out he was blind. So there was no way since the ETN that he could see that Jesus was passing by. But he still could hear he was passing by. And because he could hear, his whole life was about to be changed. He says, I'm not going to be angry that I cannot see. I'm just glad that I'm able to hear. Somebody missed that thing right there. See, we spend too much time being angry about what we can't do. When we need how to learn how to lift our hands and tell God thank you for what we can do. Oh, we spend too much time mad about what we don't have. But what we need to do is we need to look around us and see what we do have. And tell God thank you for the things that we do have. I learned a lesson from this brother. This brother say, I'm not going to sit here with my, with my cheeks puffed out with, with a frown on my face because I can't see. I'm going to tell Oh God, thank you that I can hear and I heard that he's passing by. Jesus, master, have mercy. Sometimes people lose hope because they just can't see it. Sometimes people give up because they cannot see it. Sometimes people throw in the towel because they cannot see it. But don't give up, Calvary, because you can't see it. Faith walk is not a seeing walk. It is a hearing walk. It's not what I can see with my eyes, but it's what I can hear with my heart, with my ears, construct in my heart and watch God produce through his word. He hears, Brother Child, that the master was passing by. Look at your neighbor and say, open your ears. And after you open your ears, then open your mouth. He imitates his leper brothers found in chapter 17, verse 11 through 17. And he calls out to the only one that could help him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He made his decree for himself. He spoke up for himself. He wasn't concerned with what others people's ideas or opinions about him. He wasn't concerned with what they were going to say about him. Didn't matter if they liked him or not. He knew that if he was going to get out of this mess, he was going to have to open his mouth. And I encourage somebody, stop waiting for other folk to speak into your life. Stop waiting for other folk to validate your existence. Ah, uh, stop waiting for other folk to tell you you're going to make it. You need to learn how to open your mouth and speak into your own life. Validate your own self. Stop waiting for the pastor to stop by your house, anoint you with all and lay hands on you. Baby, you better go get you some virgin oil. Ask the Lord to bless it. Put a cross on your head and say, by his stripes, I am healed. And then when I get there, I'll touch and agree with you that what you've been praying for, God will do it. Because he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, then I shall be in the midst. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm going to speak into my own life. Validate yourself. Be your biggest fan. Because folks will always try to keep you down. Look at the story. He asked the master, have mercy on me. 
Oh, yeah, have mercy on me. Then verse 39 says, those who were in the lead shouted and told him to be quiet. They didn't believe he was worth, worthy of the Lord's blessing. They wanted him to stay in his place. Because as long as he was in his place, they could keep their place. They don't have to worry about moving from their place as long as you're in your place. But I read somewhere the first shall, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Psalm 75 and 7, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set up another. First Peter 5 and 6, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Psalms 113 and 7, he raised up the poor out of the dust and he needed out of the dung hill. Tell somebody he's getting ready to move me. As a matter of fact, excuse me because God's getting ready to move me because I called him and he answered. Do I have about 10 cousins in here that don't mind testifying? I called the Lord and then he answered. Last point is get louder. The enemy wants to shut you up. They tried to shut him up, but the says he only got louder when the enemy tries to shut you up i dare you calvary just get louder don't never let your problem be louder than your praise don't let your sickness be bigger than your praise don't let what you're going through be bigger than your praise yes god will if he brought you to it, you ought to go ahead and bless him because the Lord will bring you through it. Yes, there's somebody in the building today. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I will not be quiet because God's got something great in store for me. Tell somebody I will not be quiet because I got to raise these children all by myself. I will not be quiet because every time I call his name, he keeps on making a way for me. Find your three people. Give them a high five. Say, neighbor. I will not be quiet because God has been too good to me. God has brought me through too many dangers seen and unseen. I will not be quiet because every time I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, my soul, shout hallelujah. Is there anybody here that knows you need to make some noise? Because God has good to you. Tell your neighbor, excuse me while I make this noise for the Lord. You weren't there when he picked me up. You weren't there when he brought me out. You weren't there when he healed my body. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Ah, ain't he all right? Yes! Yes! Yes!
Tell somebody I will not be quiet. Every time I turn around, he does it for me. Again and again and again, over and over and over and over and over. That's why I can't keep quiet. Because the Lord's been good to me. Yes, he has.